So hi, Modupe. I'm, I'm very happy to speak to you today. Hello, Maria. It's really nice to speak to you too. You're a very, very uh, inspiring person, a uh, very busy one. Uh, please introduce yourself and uh, tell us what brought you to, to blockchain? Okay, so my name is uh, Modupe Ativie. I'm a Nigerian. And um, I actually got involved with blockchain and cryptocurrencies in um, 2017, no, 2018. So I just dabbled a little bit and uh, just decided to hold. And I literally almost forgot about, you know, my investment. But then last year, 2020, during the lockdown, I got a bit more curious and I started doing a lot more research and um, started studying on my own and then I found um, a sort of like a mentor and he was an Indian an Indian man called Raj Kapoor and he really stirred me up when he came to blockchain he's just so passionate about blockchain and then that passion transferred to me so um, originally I'm involved in learning and development I'm like a corporate I'm a corporate trainer um, in the educational sector training adults and you know helping people bridge the skill gap in their careers. So I decided to do that with blockchain as well, because um, I found out that the knowledge level was really low. Um, we have a lot of people invested in cryptocurrencies, but they don't even know what it is all about. Everybody's just interested in making money. So the first thing I did was to try and find affordable training in blockchain and cryptocurrencies and then I tried to market them to people and I did that as um, for quite a while in um, partnership with my Indian mentor but then this year early this year January 2021 I was um, nominated as the African lead for the global blockchain women alliance so what I did then was to increase try working right now to increase the involvement of women and girls in blockchain. So that has been a very inspiring journey for me because um, a lot of people feel that, okay, just um, let's leave this investment to the men and to the bold or the brave women. But I'm saying that it doesn't even need bravery. <laughs> you don't even need to be brave to invest in cryptocurrencies or to even expand your knowledge just take time and get to learn more and know more about what, you know, what it is all about. Because I believe this is the future. It is the skill of the future. I believe it is the finance of the future. And so it's about time we understood what it was all about. Hmm. And so in doing that, um, over time, I have personally trained um, about nearly 30 women. And then with younger girls in college, I've had the first exposure. I went to my alma mater, and, um, which is where I finished school, really high school. And um, the, the, I think almost 300 girls were quite interested in the technology. But on that day, I could only give them an introduction. Now, obviously, they're in school, so they also had to face their academics, you know, writing their exams. So when they come in again next term, we'll have like a proper schedule to train them in blockchain for free. So when it comes to younger girls, I offer it to them for free. And even with women, I try to offer discounted rates, but most times it's also free as well, just to increase the number of women involved. Yeah, I think this is amazing what you're doing and it is so necessary. Thank you. Because as you said, um, mostly men invest, you know, there yeah. is a many statistics that show that men um, mostly in every family are the people that invest. So yeah. this is also um, the first point of contact for so many people to cryptocurrencies, to blockchain. But yeah. it is so important for the women to also understand the background of the whole thing, not only from an investment point of view, but also from a technology point of view and from all the other use cases that blockchain has. So it's so, mm. so great that you're doing this. And Thank you. you mentioned that you are the African lead of uh, the Global Blockchain Women Alliance, which is also a very important role. So can you please 
tell a little bit more about it, about your role there? Yes. Um, okay. Yes, it is an important role, but it came as um, a result of the fact that um, I was involved in a lot of blockchain discussions, blockchain meetings across the world. And many times I was the only African woman in the room. So um, there was um, two different organizations came together. So we had the India Blockchain Alliance and we had the Disney Dragon Chain. And together they formed the Global Blockchain Women Alliance. And they said there was no representation at all in Africa. So I was just asked, oh, this, oh multiply, you're, multiply, you're in a lot of meetings that we have, and most times you're the only African woman. Would you like to represent us in Africa? And I said, well, I'll be delighted to represent you in Africa. So that's how that started. And um, the training, the reason why I am directly involved in a lot of the training programs is because there's still a shortage of the skill you know, many people don't really know what it is all about. People think blockchain is um, synonymous with Bitcoin. And um, there's been a lot of Bitcoin scams in Nigeria and in Africa. So most people are like, you know what, I don't even want to hear about it, especially if they're not ready to invest. But we have the majority of the public that is willing to take on the risk and they go ahead in investing. So, but for the Global Blockchain Women Alliance, I'm directly involved in training, and I'm also working to train people who would be trainers as well to, you know, to expand and extend the reach um, for blockchain technologies among women and girls. And how do you reach the girls? Because I know in a previous talk that we had, you told me that you go to the schools yeah. Uh, how do you how do you do that? Like, do you contact the teacher first, the, the, the schools first? How do you uh, approach the girls? And maybe you can tell us a little bit about the interest they're having. Like, are they interested in this? Are they happy when you come? Yeah. OK, so for that, I have to contact the school first. And I started with my alma mater. So this is the school where I went to high school. And so it was a a bit easier for them to accept me because I've been, I, I went to that school as well. So we started from the principal and from some of the teachers, and then they gave us time to address the students. So the interest was really um, quite amazing because we spoke to them and I actually had some interview sessions. And in some of my interview sessions, I had girls saying they were interested in artificial intelligence and in robotics, you know, and these are kind of things they wanted to do with their future. So I got questions like, oh, I want to be a lawyer. Can I use blockchain? Or I want to be a doctor. Can I use blockchain? And so people wanted to know how blockchain would be relevant in their different careers. So that is part of the subsequent classes we will have because the first session there was just an introduction. And there's some other schools that we have lined up as well. And as I have the time, as the time is available, I would go and you know, speak to them as well and reach out to girls that could be interested and just you know, sow this, I, I, I feel is mostly just sowing the seed of the knowledge and you know, as they grow and as they go through school, they can develop on that foundation in whatever area they're interested in. Absolutely. This is very important and it's great that you're doing it. Thank and you. Mudupe, I know I've read a lot of statistics that um, the African continent is very far ahead in the adoption of cryptocurrencies if we compare it to, let's say, Europe. Um, can you tell us more about the role of cryptocurrencies in Africa? Right. Okay. thing is that we are in um, the African economy and in many countries, many African countries, we, there's, um, I th it's the discomfort of the people. So that discomfort pushes them to make investments, whatever can, how can we make more money? So that's the premium thought on everybody's mind. So, okay, so we've heard that Bitcoin used to be worth nothing. And now it's about 40, 50,000 dollars. 
So everybody wants to increase their income, increase their resources. And so that's why we have this. You know, incidentally, nearly every time there's one Ponzi scheme or another that's thriving in Nigeria and in Africa. And that's just because people want to make money so bad. <laughs> so even the people that have fallen for the Bitcoin scams or the cryptocurrency scams, it's just that desire to increase their income. And I believe that that's the reason why we have people that are invested in cryptocurrencies. Many of them don't even understand fully how it works. You know, they just want to increase their mm. income and resources. Yeah. And we have people that are um, involved training other people and they themselves have no formal training. So they've set up training centers and they're training others in the adoption and in the use of cryptocurrencies. And they don't even have formal training. So that they've developed their kind of like their expertise from trading on their own. And based on their experience, they have begun to train others also. So that adoption um, is because of that need and that desire to increase income as quickly mm -hmm. as possible. The banks are not giving enough interest, um, the shortage of jobs, not everybody's yeah. employed. You know, so what else can I do to increase my income? So that's one of the reasons mm -hmm. for the quicker adoption. And you're right that Actually, before we start investing in something, before we start actually working with something, you, we need the education. So yes, yes. What, can you, what can you recommend for someone that wants to start learning about blockchain now? When they look at training programs or university programs or whatever they look at, um, how can they find or what are the quality criteria that they should look for in programs like this? From your experience, what, what is a good blockchain program? From my experience, a good blockchain program is one that is rounded and would give you every aspect, every like a holistic understanding of the concept of blockchain. And just to help people understand, especially that blockchain is beyond cryptocurrencies. And once I found that out last year, I got extremely interested. So I would say a holistic blockchain program is a program like the DLT Talents for Women, because I remember applying for the DLT Talents for Women. And it was, I actually applied hoping for a partnership because as um, for the Global Blockchain Women Alliance, I was looking for international partners that would be willing to train African women and girls for free. So that's how I started out. So I applied for the DLT program saying, oh, would you partner with me to train other women and girls in Africa? And they said, oh, that it's not exactly that kind of program, but they could take me on and train me. And then I could you know, begin to share my knowledge in my space. And I thought, oh, that's amazing. And it's free as well. So I got on the program and I learned so much over time and expanded my knowledge and gave me like practical experience and the exposure as well. And I think that that's one of the, the biggest things, um, the sense of community as well. So a good blockchain program should, um, I believe should launch you into a community to help you build a culture of practice and not just head knowledge, but to help you build a culture of practice. Wonderful, wonderful. So thank you very much, Modupe. Uh, I'm, it's been a uh, pleasure, Maria. Yeah, it was great talking to you. And thank very, you. I thank wish you. you good luck with um, educating young women in Africa about thank blockchain. You. Thank you.